Hello and welcome to Seagull Social Season 3, Episode 31. And we're joined with not quite the boys because Ben isn't here, but obviously Maz and special guest today, Joe. Hope you're well, mate. It's been a, been a while since I spoke to you. I believe he spoke to Maz not too long ago, I think he said as well. Did, yeah, yeah um, we, we, so... we did the, what's it called? It's called the best of the rest or something, isn't it? We, we, we get labelled with the best of the rest. Um, yeah, I can't remember which channel it was on now, bro. Um, with, um, with Dan. Dan. Dan Potts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man, what yeah, am I talking yeah. about? Yeah, Dan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, God, if he's watching him. this, sorry about that, Dan. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> what show was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but oh uh, yeah, uh, it, it was good. We're obviously talk, representing the clubs, haven't we? We got to represent our our clubs. Mm. So I think we do that Love well. that, mm. love that. And Joe, you're you're a good uh, Leeds creator, mate. Um, I, you didn't say you didn't go to the game of stayed the watch along instead, but um, just yeah. get your thoughts on the game, mate. Really, uh, what was your what was your take as a Leeds fan? Because it's quite good actually to hear it, hear the other side of the of the story. Um, on uh, in isolation, it's a massive point because Brighton are a top side, mm-hmm. um, but. Yesterday, Bournemouth win. Uh, Man United are currently drawing with Southampton. Everton yeah. win. And we've actually dropped down the table into 19th after what was a, a great a great point. We didn't deserve it. Let me just say that. We we did not deserve the point on, on, on the run Fair. of the game. But listen, you've got to take them um, when, when you can get them. Um, I wasn't expecting anything really pre-match. I didn't even give a score prediction because I was just really concerned uh, about Brighton. <laughs> Um, which is mad, you know. It's mad <laughs> to think how far <laughs> to think how far Brighton have come. It's mad, but you yeah. know what? Like, there's so many fans saying, "Oh, it's Brighton, it's Brighton." I'm like, yeah, but it's not that Brighton anymore. You know, mm. this is a Brighton that's pushing for Europe. You know, Deserbi as well as took you to another level. So, it's a good point in isolation, but in terms of the state of the season, we needed all three. We need all three in every game we play now. To be fair. Mm. I respect you for saying that actually, because you know I remember <laughs> with uh, your podcast before, but there's a few uh, there's a few digs I remember uh, both ways, both ways. I'll, I'll take accountability as well. Uh, but obviously, when the when the Ben White situation was going on, uh, Leeds yeah. Leeds and Brighton was always a bit of an entertaining one for social media purposes. Um, mm. But yes, it had, things have changed with hundred percent. Because you um, love that life, Ryan. You love that <laughs> life, man. <laughs> I've calmed down now, mate. I'm 22 now, a bit older now. I'm getting old now, so it's a bit different. Um, <laughs> but um, Maz, uh, yeah, what was your general take of the game? We'll get into it all as we say as normal, but yeah. just to hear a general overview, really, and what your thoughts were, because it, was, it yeah. was frustrating on our part, wasn't it? No, definitely, definitely. I, I echo Joe's uh, thoughts in the respect of, yeah, I thought Leeds were uh, not lucky, but I, I felt like we were the better team on, on the whole. But of course, uh, I think a draw, you can't really begrudge a draw just because of the way the, the game went about. I know beforehand and when we did our predictions, I predicted a win, but I did say, I did say it will be tough. I, I said that, you know, mm. Leeds usually do give us a really good game um, going into it, even though I did predict the win, which obviously didn't c- come through. Um, all that aside, yeah, I thought we spurned chances, obviously, I'm sure we'll get onto it, but there's a few chances we spurned and, you know, yeah. uh, not saying it was all his fault, but for example, Danny Welbeck, you know, had a few chances where he possibly mm. should have scored. Um, and yeah, like just, just generally, I think we, yeah, we had moments maybe to, to really sort of put the game to bed or make, you know, really take control of the game, which we didn't do. And yeah, Le- Leeds punished us and fair enough, like a draw at the end of the day. Yeah, it is what it is. And um, hopefully we go on to the next game uh, against Palace and we can get a win there. Well, so that's a different different ball game against Palace on Wednesday, but that's that's another conversation. But yeah, I I think before we get into the proper game, I wanted to touch on the fact because you mentioned Danny Welbeck, Joel Veltman, Danny Welbeck, Adam Webster. Probably when I look at the social media feed of, of Brian at the moment, they are the ones that get absolutely ripped apart. Particularly Welbeck, I think, compared to Veltman, who probably in his in his own admission would say he probably had one of his worst games for Brighton so far. But when you look at the basis of Welbeck, I think yes, okay, he missed some big chances. But Mads, do you not think that the the hate and the things are going a little bit too far yeah. on social at the moment? Oh, hundred percent. Like, and then unfortunately, as bad as it is, that is just social media for you. People mm. just jump on. People love to scapegoat. You know, there's always there always has to be one person you want to blame, isn't it, for mm. any kind of defeat? Whereas the manager, it's a player, uh, whoever it might be, even the fans. You know, people just love to blame. The, the blame game is they love it. So yeah, yeah. of course it's, it's it's unjust. It's not it's not fair. Like I said, it wasn't just Danny Welbeck. Like I think you know collectively there was a few performances. They were a bit questionable, like you said, Webster, Veltman. You know, it wasn't just one person 
that's essentially ruined the game for us. And, <laughs> you know, like I said, Leeds is always a tough game, especially at Ellen Road. The atmosphere, uh, the fans are incredible. We always say how good Leeds fans are, especially at home. Um, and mm. the fact that, as Joe alluded to, they are fighting for their lives at the moment to try and get three points. It's never going to be an easy game. So, yeah, I, I think people on socials, it's just, unfortunately, it's the nature of it. And uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But, that's just the way we are, where we are at the moment, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. Do you know, just yeah. just from a Leeds fan's perspective, it's it's quite interesting you pick them three because I, I don't know, I don't I don't think any. <laughs> if you're saying for me like Veltman had one of his worst games, he must be he must be alright. Maybe <laughs> we're just maybe we're just that bad, you know? Because I'm just fighting. <laughs> we're we're good. Did didn't Webster set up grow? Well, like was the player that played the ball through to Gross before he could be right. scored, I, I think. Yeah, it was either yeah, him or I Veltman, think it was, I think. You know. Yeah, you, you yeah. could be right, actually, in saying that. Um, I, I think, yeah... Danny Welbeck's miss was brutal, though. It was yeah. brutal. Yeah, there's no, there's no probably hiding from that. I, and I can't come out and say, look, he, he, it's a chance he's got to score that. I mean, for, for a player of Welbeck's quality, he's got to score that, he knows that. Uh, but we'll get into the game now. Um, just because, yeah, my head was very hot after that game, I'm not going to lie. I was fuming. <laughs> and I, I think it's just because of the expectation that... The Zerbi set, the club set, you know, we're, we're, we we expect a lot from this team now. Rightfully so, I think, because, you know, we're a good side. And, and you know, Joe, you, you admit that as well. It's, it's good to hear. But I think, you know, we are a good team these days. And, and it, I think the fact that whenever we come out without a win, Brighton fans are now naturally thinking we should be taking more. Um, but yeah, we'll get into the game because, as you say, we did we did go one nil up, and we started actually very well. I thought, to be honest with you, mm. um, Leeds were looking quite not like I don't know about you, Joe, but it looked like you probably weren't as high intensity. I don't know how to describe yeah. the, the old Leeds traditional way that I, I think. Yeah, of. I think I think for me, Ryan, though, and 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 it 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 came across in the crowd as well, and uh, it took me back mm. to when Bielsa first came in, and we used to play it out from the back, and you'd get the old the older fans saying, stop playing it out from the back, get it upfield. And it felt, <laughs> because a lot of Leeds fans are so used to us being hell for leather pressing, mm. when we were actually standing off. And 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 I, I really liked what Grazia did from the start when Steele had it at the back. He mm. pushed the two attackers right onto um, Webster and um, Dunk, but then also moved Adams and Rocker right on top of Caicedo and Gross. And I thought, mm. listen, it may be not be great to watch, but Grazia's obviously defend first kind of vibe, you know? And I think at times, as much as Brighton did change and started to come into the game more, a lot of it was resorted to long balls at times because there wasn't that pass or you were losing it. And mm. the fans in the stadium were booing. Brighton fans were all laying at nil-nil, I think, when you were passing it around. And I was like, oh, God. And as a Leeds fan, any fan, it's hard to take yeah. in your home stadium. But yeah, ultimately, we need points, man. And had yeah. we have gone hell for leather against Brighton yesterday, you'd have picked us apart and you'd be looking mm. at a West Ham scoreline, you know, 4-0. Yeah. And that's, that's just the truth. So... As a fan, yes, it's coming away from what we're used to, but you've for me it's the man. best best course of action, man, against mm. this top right inside for me. And we got a point, yeah. so you can't really grumble, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, um, as ironically to, but it was Josh Akers actually, um, old Bible. He said that he thought that they deserved a point. It was a, it was an even match, and that it was deserved, and that. Yeah, they they were happy with it. And I said to them about pretty much everything that Joe said um, of, you know, I think that we created the better chances. I think that, you know, we're going to be the ones that come away from this game more annoyed than they will. You're going to be happier with the greatest respect and we're going to come away more frustrated. Natural with football is what it is. But Maz, I don't know what your take is overall. Uh, you know, the beginning of the game, I thought we started quite well. You think? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I thought we set the tone quite early on, like what we what we were trying to achieve, what we we're trying to do. But yeah, you know, as as uh, Joe said, I think Gracia sort of set the team up to to not lose, like with a great respect. It was like mm. let's let's just focus on the, the the basic arts of of defending and make sure we we're, we're solid solid at the back, and then make your foundations. And you know, players like Nonto, really Nonto, and even Jack Harrison, who obviously scored a cracking second goal. Yeah. Like those kind of players can then hit us on the break or, or do what they need to do, and they, you know they can damage us, which we sure we saw and they did, and even Bamford uh, who scored as well. So yeah. like I, th I think yeah, I think they just you know he had a, he had a game plan and he, he executed it, um, and you know like like Joe said, I 
I can't grumble at the result. Obviously, I'm frustrated because it's a big game, which, yeah, as a, when I was going into it, I was really confident. I was like, look, this could be a big three points here, especially against a struggling lead side. But, you know, I, after the game, I was like, I was, I was up, I was a bit annoyed. I was a bit frustrated because obviously going up twice, <laughs> you know, being a goal up twice is just, yeah, you expect to go on and, you know, win the game. But yeah, it was just one of those days, I think. And I, I know we've had it a couple of times now, obviously Fulham, um, Palace. We've had those days where we go into it expecting and they're not coming, we're not coming out with, with what we want. It can be frustrating, but I think, yeah, we just got to remember that there's no easy game. Just look at like yesterday with uh, Bournemouth beating Liverpool after they just won 7-0. Like, in the Premier League now, it's just mental. Like, anyone could be anyone, uh, as cliche mm. as it sounds. So, yeah. yeah, that's where I am with it all. Yeah, and obviously we started to say well, and then we actually got the goal. Uh, Mitoma with a great back header. Um, for a guy that can't header, he's now got two goals and assists with his head. Um, so he's not doing too bad. Um, but then Pascal Gross as well, another big chance created. What a surprise. And it's headed in by Alexis McAllister, um, which was actually a very clinical finish because what I want to say about Alexis was the amount of chances he missed in that first half. My God. It was horrible. I mean, it was a bit like Alexis when he was at Crystal Palace uh, a few weeks ago. There were so many big chances that we missed through him. And, you know, I, I absolutely love Alexis. He's our World Cup winner. We love him. He's our, our golden boy, right? But when, when you're missing those sort of chances, it, it just, it, 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 as you say, it's one of those days. It starts setting in your head a little bit. Um, Joe, I don't know what your take in was of when we scored, but did you think it was going to be one of those where we ran away with it or because of how many chances we were missing? Because as Brighton fans, we were thinking, this is a lot and, and we know what we're like, we can go and throw this away. And did you think that or did you just sort of think, no, they can go on and do sort of a West Ham here? Uh, as soon as you scored, I thought it was game over. Um, I'm you? not sure I expected you to score four. It was just more a case of because Leeds United are not scoring goals, because we're not winning games, as soon as you went one up, mm. I thought, oh, it's game over now, it's curtains. Mm. Um, it was same with the second goal as well. When you went 2-1, I was like, all right, that's us done. And I think that's just the mindset of the majority of Leeds fans at the minute, just because of where we are in the table and mm. how difficult it's been to, to score goals, create chances, get points, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, as soon as you scored, um, I thought it was game over. I was listen. Brighton were well on top. Chelsea were on top the week before, but um, we were so easy to score against under the previous manager. So the mm. fact that we're staining games, um, as touched on it, you know, just staining games. That's what Grazzi is doing, staining games. And hopefully, you know, you he knew we had Rodrigo back from injury, Sinistera mm. as well. Obviously, only played about thirty seconds, but then players are coming back. So the longer we can stain games, it's all about nicking points late on, I guess. But yeah, mate, I, to be honest, as soon as you scored, I thought it was curtains. Um, so, that, again, I'll come back to it. It's, it's the fact that we've got points, great, but it's just the way the league's going. I mean, yeah, I mm. think, I don't know. Are we going down? I can't deal with the championship, <laughs> man. I watched, Nor I, I watched Norwich Sunderland this morning and I was like, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. There's, we've already we've already sent him into a breakdown and we're only 13 minutes into the podcast. That's on um, <laughs> so, no, what, what I want to say really is yeah I, I agree with what you boys are saying I think as I said at the, at the beginning the expectation I have of this team is so high um, I don't know what it is when we play away from home Maz but it seems like we just I, I, I don't know our, our clinical edge our fit, ruthlessness that we seem to keep going on about that Deserby's put into us just doesn't quite follow through I don't know it's obviously there's no correlation to it being away but it just seems in the last few weeks obviously against Fulham as well which was at home but I look back on Palace particularly, that game reminded me so much of Palace where, you know, we've almost accepted now when we were under Potter, we were talking about expected goals, blah, blah, blah. Whereas now we're a bit more like, if we don't score, we deserve whatever happens next. And Patrick Bamford to score a deflected goal in the nature that happened, loop over steel, hit the crossbar. It was just, to me, that was the most Brighton Championship goal that I could possibly have ever created if I could. And I don't know, Mazza, what you think, but like that, that just to me set that tone of, we are still here to have the the unluckiness or however you want to call it. Yeah. I, I mean, just generally speaking, I think the fact that we had 62% possession away from home, I think that's pretty impressive in mm. itself. I know, I know, I know possession Man, doesn't win really games. I didn't realise that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 know, I know possession doesn't win you games. <laughs> you know, it's not going to get you three points. You can have all the possession in the world and, you know, lose 5-0. Do you know what I mean? But 
just the fact, I think, doing that for away from home, like I said, in, in a, a sort of a very sort of a cauldron, uh, I would call it, Ellen Road, uh, at times, and when it wants to be, obviously, maybe not when Brighton turn up, but when it wants to be, it can be a proper <laughs> atmosphere. Um, and yeah, just to have 62% possession away from home, I thought, yeah, that was a big sort of plus for me. But yeah, like you said, Brian, those spurn chances, those chances that we were missing and, you know, and not, not being clinical enough. But then when you look at it the other way around, it's like we have been clinical in certain games. You know, you've got to look at the West Ham game. We pretty much took all our chances. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want to put it down. I don't want to be that cliche and just be like, oh, it was just one of those days. Put it, you know, put it past us. Let's look at the next game. But I feel like it was just one of those games. Like we were, let's put it bluntly, we were the better side, like on 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 the whole. So it's not like we were poor or we were struggling to create chances. I think I'd rather be, you know, creating lots of chances and missing them than not creating at all. Like, you just got to look at Palace. Yeah. They haven't had a shot on target in three well, games. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not I laughing about that yet, mate. Wednesday's got to happen. <laughs> I know, I'm I know, not I know. laughing about that yet. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, at least I'd rather be in our position than, let's say, a Palace or, yeah. I don't know, a Southampton or I get what whoever it might be down, down the bottom, basically. That's the truth. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and obviously, yeah, that that goal, Joe, you can talk me through it because you're the Leeds fan here. But that, to me, as I said, it, it does scream the most bright sort of conceding finish that I could have seen. It seemed like, I think it was Veltman gave it away initially and then Webster sort of lost his man completely. Tried to, he got a bit dragged out of position, tried to catch back up with him by sliding in. Bit of a rookie error, really, and it just loops over Steel. I mean, it was, you can't really put the blame on Steel at all for that. It just looped over him. He couldn't really have done much about it. I don't know what you take of it, Joe, but did you think yeah. a slice of fortune or a moment of not quality, I suppose, but what you needed? Um, it's what we needed, mate. I mean, it's the first time in weeks that Bamford's actually hit with his right foot, with his weaker foot. We've been bemoaning him for weeks because there's been so many chances where it's come across his body and instead of using his instep of his right foot, he goes with the, you know, the outside of his left boot and absolutely mm. air shots it. So <laughs> it was just nice to see him use his right foot and, it just mm. shows, and I think that's what a lot of Leeds fans are thinking. If you actually have a shot, then you might yeah. score a goal, no matter how much <laughs> it goes in, you know what I mean? So um, it was nice to see him score, and I do think he then improved. He was getting in front of Dunk, he was getting in front of Webster and knocking it mm. around the corner, and I think a lot of Leeds United players are confidence players, you know? They don't have that killer mentality t for me. That's what we're struggling with um, yeah. at the minute as well. And um, Bamford's definitely a confidence player. So it doesn't matter how it goes in. It went in. It was unexpected, as I say, because I thought I, I didn't see us getting back into the game. No. It's really interesting you saying about missing chances and that as well, because uh, Brighton are like, there's only Arsenal and City that have scored more away goals than Brighton mm. this season, mm. which is just mad. So it's <laughs> uh, it must be nice to be able to bemoan um, not scoring chances, yeah. do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because that was... I get rid of... That was one of the yeah. things, like, before the game, thinking, wow, yeah. yeah you, you've made me realise, Joe, how arrogant we've become um, when, I, when I'm now thinking yeah, about this it. Is, it. This is it, it bro. True. This is it. I'm just listening to it. I need a sick bucket, <laughs> man. <laughs> this was you, uh, uh, what was it, two seasons ago, Yeah, mate? yeah. yeah. Two I'm very yeah, glad we got you on. <laughs> when you finish night. I'm very glad we got you on. Um, you okay, well, all, right? look, let's let's put a positive spin on it, because what, what I want to say is one player I really do want to pick out was Moises Caicedo um, and Karen Matoma as well. I thought both of them were fantastic, but most so was Moises. I, again, mate, he, he, since he signed in that new contract, he seems to have just turned up even more. Um, it's almost like that whole January saga wasn't even him. Who would have thought it, TalkSport? But it's good because <laughs> you're now seeing it as... Moises has given everything for us. Those tackles he was putting in yesterday, controlling midfield. Um, yeah. You know, if he did lose the ball, there was a slight mistake. He was right back on it. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, yeah. it goes without saying, Maz. What, what was your take on Kaiseido? Yeah, he was class. And also, like, I know he got yellow carded, but I suppose, like, that's not the end of the yeah, world. Yeah, but he like, had to get yellow, didn't he? You look he? at Casemiro. That was a, it was one of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, as well. Well, well, look, 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 look at Casemiro. Like he's he just got a red card today. I think it's his second red card of the season. He's, off, he's got a four match ban, and he gets yellows quite consistently. But he's one of the best yeah. DMs mm. in the league. So you know, and I, I think Casemiro is definitely in the bracket. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put him on the sort of same level as Casemiro, obviously, because Casemiro has been doing it for years and years and years. But uh, Casemiro has the ability to be a top class player. Oh yeah, uh, he is Without incredible now. Don't get me wrong, but he already is. Like, to be yeah. elite level, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be elite, I, th I genuinely believe he will be elite level. Like I think he's mm. that good. Um, but yeah, I thought he was class yesterday. Yeah, like you said, Ryan, done everything 
he needed to do. Like you said, made those uh, made that foul which he needed to do. Um, and he seems like he's now playing for the team. I think that's the key thing. It was when he had that that contract sort of uh, dispute or wherever it was, or agent basically playing, doing stuff behind the behind the scenes. He just yeah, he, he obviously wasn't himself. He got dropped, um, and then when he it came back, felt like he got a bit rattled, didn't it? I think it wasn't yeah. so much not playing for the team, but it was more like he was. I don't know. I feel like it was just a bit unfair on him because he's so young, isn't he? And I think it was just a bit of one of those where he's now all of a sudden one of the most talked about footballers in the in the country. And, you know, it must have just been a bit of a whirlwind time for him because of how everything just got blown up. Fabrizio Romano stirring the pot. And it must have been yeah. a bit of a whirlwind for him personally. But um, no, no, it's good to see exactly. him playing very well at them. No, exactly. Um, Okay, yeah, good. And yeah, so then half time, obviously. Second half, I mean, Joe, you started really well. Um, and, I, and I must admit, I was getting quite worried. Uh, I don't know what it was. You, you, you seemed to change a little bit, came at us a little bit more. And I, to be honest with you, I thought since the goal, we looked a little bit rattled and it looked like you were taking advantage, at least for a good 10 minutes. Mm. No, no, I agree. Um, I think I'd have... I'd have made changes personally at half time, but listen, Grazzi is he, he tends he's tend to have got it right. It's mad really because for me, Jack Harrison was woeful yesterday, but got a goal and an assist. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I, don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know. Goal. I don't know. Goal. Yeah. Goal, yeah. yeah. Depends who you are. Um, yeah. <laughs> why he's not playing Nonto, I don't know. But um, yeah, listen, we we started well. That's what I mean. It was. Um, Sod's law to concede the way we did as well. Uh, I think Matoma did well. I mean, Matoma had Luke Ayling on toast yesterday. Oh, God, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was a tough afternoon for him. Even Estepinian getting in uh, one point as well. And I just thought, Luke, man, that was so... Like, as a fan watching it, you could tell it was coming and he still wasn't able to to yeah. stop it. Um, yeah, Brighton... Uh, do you know the mad thing is, like, you're talking about players there. When I did the watch line, I was like, I don't know any of these folks by by Levi Colwell on the bench, but I can guarantee they're all ballers. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> this is the thing yes, with Brighton. Like, it's... Mean. The recruitment policy is just the envy, man. The envy of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yourselves and Brentford, which is, oh, it annoys me. <laughs> I can't. It was like looking at Brentford <laughs> and Brighton, like, oh my God, I wish they, our clubs were run like theirs. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it did annoy me about the second half a lot? Um, you know, we got the goal, whatever. I didn't think we were probably the best we've been for a while. I thought we were still okay. Probably, as you say, the the the, the expectation of this team is is very high. The standards are, the, are high, and as they should be when you're pushing for for European places. Um, but what did really annoy me was I think a probably a good twenty minutes. Adam Webster was injured. Um, he was holding his hamstring, clearly holding his hamstring. He couldn't run. He was he was making stupid fouls. He was he was gone completely out of the game, and it was essentially like playing with one defender with Lewis Duncan, and it meant that Veltman was getting dragged out of position because Webster couldn't keep up, and it was so obvious that he was injured. and I and I don't know whose fault this lies on, whether it's deserved for not taking him off or whether it's Webster for not going down to get himself taken off, because there's an element of being brave and facing it, but then there's also an element of you need to actually go down and help the team and just sacrifice yourself because it wasn't working. For for Webster and got injured. I think he had to come off sooner. Uh, maybe Colwell isn't fit enough yet, but um, obviously Van Heck's more than capable at, at centre half for us. Yeah, well, he took him off, didn't he, in the 88th minute, I think it was. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah, like you said, just, just too late. What's the point? It's like yeah. five minutes to go. Uh, we've added time, you know, like you said, just get him off earlier. And and you never know, with a with a fully functioning centre-back, we can play from the back and potentially, you know, create more chances mm. and hopefully grab a goal. But, yeah, no, I, I think, you know, you know what I talked about the other week with, uh, and for your benefit, Joe, I was sort of basically a bit, not annoyed, but frustrated at always having Welbeck and Lallana injured. They, you know, nine times out of ten, mm. they're, they're out of the team with injuries. And I don't want Webster to become that player. That's my only mm. fear is, is he now going to turn into this, you know, injury prone centre half? Because on his day, he is quality, and when he gets a good yeah, run of games agree. consistent, consistently, he he will be a starter for us. He will be him and Dunkey will be the the first choice centre back. So, yeah, I just I just hope for his sake and our sake, he doesn't turn into this injury prone centre back. Um, but in hindsight as well, like to protect the player, yeah, Deserby, you know, to to because he probably inj further injured himself by playing on an injury. Yeah. So, you know, just. Uh, damage limitations get him off um, but yeah, yeah. It, mate if I'm is. honest with you I think 
I, I don't know. I, I like Webster a lot. As everyone knows, I've always gone on about Webster for the last couple of years. But I think, honestly, since his injury record recently, um, it seems like we just can't keep him fit for long enough. I mean, particularly the last sort of year, year and a half. Um, oh, we're getting a load of feedback there. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, Oof, that's horrible. That well. oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now it's gone. Sorry, that's gone straight that through my eardrums. Sorry, oh. sorry, boys. I, got, <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I just I got like a dart in like... Sorry, yeah. sorry, that's my bad, my bad. No, it's all good, it's all good. We'll, we'll go again for now, Ben can just chop sorry. that. We'll just I couldn't hear it, I was like, why, why am I not getting this? <laughs> and it was sorry. me. I just remember 25 minutes. Um, yeah, all right, cool. sorry. Um, I was, what was I going to say? Oh my God, it's completely like boggled my brain. Webster, Webster. Um, yeah, Webster. Yes, Webster. Sorry, before before Maz decided to pierce my eardrums, um, I was talking about Adam <laughs> Webster. Um, yes, I was saying about Adam Webster because I, I think, yeah, as much as I like him, everyone knows I like him, whatever, um, I do worry about his injury record. I do worry about his injury record. And it's particularly since we brought in Levi, Levi Colwell. I know he got a couple of weeks out, but he's now back. Uh, clearly not ready to go in yesterday, but I'd expect he could be ready for, for Crystal Palace. I don't know about you, Maz, but it seems like Colwell was, was pretty much established centre-back for us. I mean, it was like him and Dunk, they formed such a great partnership. And I know they're only on loan, but some of the passes he was playing, he was such a dynamic centre-half. I mean, he, he really is a, a great talent. Everyone knows that as it is. But I don't know about you, Maz, but I, I'd have him back in there now and I probably wouldn't change it But if, if, if he stays fit till the end of the season. Yeah. But before we go any further, Joe, Joe knows all about uh, loving a centre-back who came in on loan. Mm. From a oh, here party. we are. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> even still, mate. <laughs> even still, even still, mate. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That was too good. Mate. That was too good. That was too good to resist. <laughs> too good to resist. Um, no, so, yeah, going back to Levi Colwell. Um, uh, no, I, well, let, do you know what? Talking of like falling in love with the centre back, I I don't want my heart to be broken by the fact that if he becomes a consistent starter and we do yeah. love him to bits, and then because Chelsea already said they want him back, Chelsea already said it. He's you know it's pretty much confirmed that he's going to go back, and we we won't have an option to buy. Um, I could be wrong, but I, that's what I've read. So yeah, I do. I he, I agree with you, Ryan. He should start. Um, I think he's the better option out of the two. Um, from what I've seen, mm. however. Do you, I know, and I know you don't agree with this one, but I suppose I can put it to Joe. Do you want to develop a player that's not yours? But then, like you said, it's the, it's, you, you're getting the benefit now. So I'm like torn. It's like you're, you are getting the benefit of a better player, but then you're developing him to just leave and then you're going to be left with a hole. So I'm just very torn at the moment. Do you know what though? Like, yeah, it was good in that we didn't sign Ben White, but if Levi Corwell gets you over the line for Europe, he was worth his weight in True. stone. And, and it's the same with yeah, Ben White. You know, we lost Pontus Janssen, and I was okay with that. A lot of fans weren't because he pumped his chest and all that sort of stuff. But he used to wear levers, yeah, levers uh, short at the back at times. But yeah, Ben White came in was a revelation from minute one, and and we got promoted because of Ben White. You know what I mean? Uh, he was part of the back four, so. Take it. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah. You might not get him, but if it gets you Europe, which is a big chance, then yeah, no, you're right. what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I fair play. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, Colwell will be interesting for, for the next game. Um, but we'll go on to the, the last couple of goals. Just, um, obviously, Just quickly, actually, Ryan, just, just quickly before you go on to your next point. Um, I do like the fact that Zerbi's not scared to, to make these kind of calls as well. Like we saw with yeah. Jason Steele in goal. Um, you, you, you see, like, uh, who was the other player he did it with as well? Uh... There was another player as well where he wasn't really performing. Anyway, like I just yeah, I love I love the fact that De Zerbi is making big calls when he needs to, and uh, not just letting anyone rest on their laurels mm. and just thinking, yeah, you know, I, I don't really competition. That's what happened with Sanchez. He thought, yeah, he's got no competition. I can I could do what I want basically, and not really perform. Yeah. And now he's like, well, actually, shit, uh, De Zerbi's not messing about here. <laughs> I better bug mm. my ideas up. So hopefully he can come back stronger as well. As and same for Webster. If he gets dropped, hopefully Webster then thinks, fuck, I need to sort my shit out, and then. Come yeah. back stronger as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So goal. Um, obviously, Jack Harrison. I mean, there's a bit of controversy from a Brighton end on this. Um, I'm going to debunk it straight away and say, to be honest with you, I, I don't agree. I think that yes, okay, the ball was still in play marginally, maybe about a second or two, but I really, I really don't see that as affecting it. People saying that Solly March was looking at the ball and that's why he got distracted and let Harrison go. But for me, I, I think if he was, then he should be, he should be playing to the whistle. But I don't know what you think, Joe. I know obviously you're probably not going to agree with them either, um, but surely that doesn't matter, does it? I mean, it was, a, it was a good finish. Don't get me wrong. 
I probably would say perhaps it, it shouldn't have got to that stage, but it is what it is, and it was a good it was a good strike. From the the Jack Harrison one? Harrison, yeah. Harrison, yeah. yeah. What the own goal or the goal? <laughs> the actual goal. The actual goal. Oh, the so actual I goal. He scored I thought, goal. Yeah. I thought when you were talking about the controversy thing, I thought you were talking because I am big on fantasy Premier League and the amount of people that were yeah. screaming that so <laughs> much didn't get that yeah. goal. Yeah. You were like zooming in, weren't they? They were like zooming in. Honestly, because. Yeah, double game week and that. They were all going, oh, March, March. But listen, I ain't got him, so I was buzzing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I sort of get the, the ball being on the pitch, but I mean, it was off in a, in a matter of yeah. seconds. I think yeah. had that goal been chalked off, it would have been really, really unfair. Yeah. I get from a Brighton perspective, but I mean, I no, I think you, the clutching at straws. Uh, uh, it's, it's a great finish as well. Especially as well, mm. like the... If it was such a big problem, the referee should have stopped the game. He would have been like, look, yeah, like, yeah. Get, it, get the ball off the pitch. Yeah. So clearly, it wasn't as... Like, yeah, I, I'm with you guys. I, I think it's yeah. a bit of an overreaction from our fa- a pocket of yeah. our fan base, like, talking about it being yeah. chalked mm. off and all that. Uh, it, uh, didn't, it didn't impact the floor, did it? No. You know, let's no. say... I remember, like, that offside that Rashford, like when that got given, the Bruno Fernandes goal, oh, when he's yeah, literally yeah. stood in front of the ball, that's impacting it. That yeah. ball being on the pitch, it's not Great. impacting anything. So, mm. yeah. 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 Let us have a point, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Give us something. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the beach ball with Darren Bennett at Sunderland, is it? Yeah, exactly. Or Jermaine yeah, Defoe, yeah. actually. Isn't it? Um, but yeah, no, I, I do agree. I think it was a bit of a, a clutching at straws, to be honest. I mean, there was a couple of clutching at straws. I suppose I didn't really speak about the Solly slash Harrison, whoever you want to give it to, his goal. Um, but if it is Solly's goal, because I, I saw some people were claiming it was, I don't know if it's officially gone down as his or if it's officially gone down as an own I think, goal. It's, um, I think it's gone down officially as an OG. Yeah, oh, has yeah. it? Oh, it's yeah, a shame. Yeah, yeah. Why he didn't say use his it? right foot? He's beyond me. Yeah. Why did he go with <laughs> was, his left foot? It was yeah. really confusing. Yeah. We've, got, I've got, we've got to give credit, though, to Matoma. I know you probably won't, Joe, but uh, as a Brighton fan, we've oh, got to give fantastic. credit to Matoma. It was yeah. like, yeah, just a little jinky-jinky, little run. Mm. Just past, like you said, Ailing really struggled with him, and I think that, yeah, that, was, yeah. a, that was the perfect example of how much he struggled. Uh, he sort of, It was a bit too easy, I felt like. Yeah, I think yeah. Ailing just... I didn't really know how to deal with him. And, and I know his dribbling is one of his biggest assets, but still, I feel like, I don't know, would you say it was poor defending Joe from, from Ailing? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I think that's been uh, quite glaring this season. Luke Ailing's great going forward, but we do lose uh, something like, even against Chelsea, Chilwell was in so much space a lot of the time mm-hmm. as well. But listen, we brought Rasmus Christensen and the, the guy's rubbish. Like, so... <laughs> I thought he was going to say he's good then. I was like, no, no, yeah, he's, mate, he's getting, he, he can't even do a proper throw, man. He gets chalked <laughs> off for foul throws. So, listen, it's one of Jesse's signings. Um, <laughs> the fact is, we, we've we loaned out um, Cody Drama to Luton and, and we've only got Luke and, and uh, Rasmus. And, and listen, I love Luke he's part of the old guard and all that. But yeah, we, we do need an improvement in that position. Mm. Um, but yeah. Rasmus is not it, so it is what it is. Just got to go yeah. with Luke. Yeah, I can agree. Um, yeah, the the goal itself was a bit of a mess, as you say. I mean, yes, it was great work from Matoma, but Mas, I don't know about you, mate. I mean, we went two one up, and then obviously we have that big Welbeck chance we've already spoke about, but we had a couple more as well. But the point of the matter is, we only used two sub- subs yesterday. They're very mm. late by Deserby standard. You you know he normally just does it. You know if he doesn't agree with the team, he'll just change it straight away. Yeah. I don't know about you, but we had Facundo Bonanotte, we had Jeremy Sarmiento, etc. on the bench. I mean, that they're, they're capable of changing the game, or do you just think they're just not 100%. ready to be trusted against Leeds away? Or is it too much of a an ask to throw them against sort of, you know, you're playing against bottom of the league away, they're right up for it. Sometimes putting in a young player isn't the best idea, but no. perhaps that was a thinking or not, I don't know. No, I mean, I think, as you touched on, Ryan, I think we've seen the impact that Sami, the Samientos have had. Like, just remember Arsenal, like, even against Arsenal, Samiento mm. came on and was brilliant. That's just one example. Um, but yeah, I, I think definitely, I don't think it was a case of maybe he doesn't trust them. I think maybe he just felt like we, we, it was going well enough, as in that team that yeah, was on the pitch. the team was playing enough. okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. There wasn't like, I don't think it was a reason where he thought, right, that like, he's shit or he's doing really bad. You know, he's struggling. Let's get him off. Yeah. Obviously, he made Welbeck for Ferguson. And um, interestingly, again, our, our good friend Josh Akers, uh, a fellow Leeds <laughs> fan, Joe, um, he actually described uh, Evan Ferguson, and I would love to hear you both opinion on this, as okay. a serial box winner. Um, he thought he was that bad. He thought he'd won a competition to play for Brighton yesterday, which, um, yeah, I mean, he can have his <laughs> he can have his opinions. I don't know if he was just trying to get a nibble from me at all. Um, yeah, but I'd yeah, he, he didn't break Ferguson. 
Yeah, uh, uh, he didn't rate Ferguson at all when um, he thought that, yeah, Welbeck um, had to come on. But yeah, in yeah, terms of play, like, Josh, the players that is a pitch... fantastic win for uh, Leeds against Brighton. This, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's since you've been promoted, okay. actually, should I say. Yeah, well uh, But yeah, he, he, <laughs> he's, just a, he's a massive... Uh, the delusion is uh, incredible. Um, he, said t- he, actually, he actually said teams like Brighton as well, is that we should be beating teams like Brighton if oh, we want to stay God. up. So yeah, yeah. Um, good, good lad is our acres. Anyway, uh, <laughs> going back to the original point, yeah, uh, I agree with you, Ryan. I think he definitely could have made changes more than he, the one he did with the Welbeck for Ferguson. Mm. Bringing on, yeah, like you said, a Bonanotte or a, or a Sarmiento. Uh, just a little bit of tricky, yeah. a little bit of, you know, like Leeds have got a no, uh, Nonto, I think that's how you say it, um, yeah. who I, th- I think is a brilliant player. Like he's just, mm. yeah, he's, he's, class, he's, he's explosive, he's, he's young, he's mm. hungry. He's just got all the attributes to be a very, very, very good footballer. And yeah, like we've got similar stuff players maybe not in in style or you know exactly same model but we've got players that can come on and change the game, time like is said. probably the closest thing to nonto i think yeah. that if just the fact that nonto is a bit smaller than it makes him look a little bit more tricky but i'd say yeah I, if i was yeah. to directly compare i'd say he's the closest thing we've got but i get what you're saying yeah it's, it's like those sort of players you as the game opens up a little bit there's exactly. potential for exactly, one of these younger yeah. players to come in as well an injection of pace is always yeah. I, I do get the thinking. I, I I don't know. It's just it, it just doesn't sit well because we haven't won the game. I think you know if we're looking back on this and it ended two one, we wouldn't be saying anything. So I suppose in that yeah, of sense of it, yeah, maybe on the balance of that, maybe that makes sense because as you say, Welbeck should have scored. Alexis should have scored. Matomo had a couple of chances. March had a couple of chances. So it all balances out in the end, I suppose. But when you don't take your chances, you get what you deserve in the end. Um, Joe, I want to get your sort of thoughts for the rest of the season, mate, as a Leeds fan. I mean, obviously, it's, it's not looking great for you. But at the same time, there is a lot of a lot of bad teams this year. Yeah. There is a lot of bad yeah. teams this year. Um, and it, it, the Premier League seems to change every week, to be honest. And mm. I can't really, com- you know directly say who's going to get where in the whole sort of from about seventh down no do you know what from yeah. fourth down there's no clear cut anywhere um mm. but do you think you'll stay up do you think you're enough or do you think it, it could be you know going back to the championship for you guys no i do i do think we'll stay up i i do think we'll stay up i think grazia will, will get enough points uh, i'm i'm looking forward to the international break um, which is mad because normally I hate yeah. them, but he, he, he needs say. he needs you know a nice long week and a half getting into them. And I think he came in and said we were leaking goals. Since then, you know that's that's curbed a little bit. Um, you know we've defended really well at times against tough opposition. Mm. Um, I do think we'll stay up. Look, like you said, the league table all the way up to Palace, all the way up to Palace. Like uh, Maz said earlier, they haven't had a shot on target in three games, which is the first time since Opta started bloody uh, <laughs> recording records or whatever. So, yeah, Forest, they're definitely not out of it. Nottingham Forest. Um, mm. They're on a run now. They're back them. down again, aren't they? What's that? Sorry, I said they're on a good run now. They're sort of yeah. falling back down again. Yeah, um, yeah. It's Their home down. form might keep them up though, and, and yeah. we need to. The thing is, right? April, the last month, Leeds United finished with City, Newcastle, West Ham, Spurs. That's our last four, which is brutal because they're all still going to be vying for positions. Yeah. yeah. The next few weeks, we've got Wolves, we've got Palace. Arsenal squeezed in there, but we've got some some games coming up: Bournemouth, uh, Leicester, Forest at home. So this next few games for us are huge. <laughs> got to get yeah. points in the board. Yeah. Just, just quickly, Joe, as well. Um, just 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 interested to know what what do you think's been the biggest difference since March March leaving to now having Grassy? What what do you think's changed? Has anything changed? I don't know. Uh, yeah, just... yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah. because um, we were so susceptible, like. Marsh could attack but not defend. So whenever we lost the ball in transition, we were always open, wide open, and we would mm. just concede goals at will. So if we'd have gone up against Hughes, for example, with that style, and and it was so narrow, Maz, it was minging to watch. I genuinely hated watching Leeds United under Marsh. Mm. Um, you know, minimal width, um, just never getting our foot on the ball. Um, we just used to just, constantly knock it forward. It genuinely mm. was like Sunday league at times. So <laughs> Grazia's come in and made us more defensively resolute. Um, we just need to find the back of the net. And I, I don't know, you can't really coach that, man. It's a confidence yeah. thing, right? Mm. It's, you know, we, you mentioned earlier about Webster with the injuries. I'm like that. I love Bamford, but now he can't be relied upon. So even, I said the other day, even now, if he played every minute and scored in every game, we still need to move on from him because he just cannot mm. be relied upon. Rodrigo getting injured at the wrong times, brutal. But he came on yesterday, 
So hopefully he'll get some more minutes. Sinister is massive for us as well. Mm. Um, he's been injured far too often. Um, yeah, we just need uh, we're creating. It's just about being clinical, mate. We need we need someone who can put the ball in the back of the net, and um, I think we'll be all right. I do, I do. It won't be great to watch, but I don't care at this point. I just want to yeah. stay in the Premier League. You know, I was actually just funny you say that. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say it's it's almost like getting the results. I mean, as Brighton fans, we know yeah. how that feels with the the Hewton era. I mean, yeah. to be honest They're with you, like, I say that <laughs> the the second season, I, how we didn't get relegated, I really, really, really don't know. It was it was purely because Cardiff were just worse than us. Yeah, worse and, than and, us, and they were worse than us by about this much. There's, there's no way we should have even really stayed in the Premier League based on our own results. Um, but, the, but the Hewton way of playing football was just defend and, and get by all means possible just stay up. Next season, then you change. You know whether that be you change manager, whether that be you you change philosophy, sign different players, go for a different model. I mean that's what happened mm-hmm. with us. And to be honest with you, we were in the situation of we had those couple of years and we we stayed up by all means possible, and and, and every away game was a write off, and then. Yeah, and all of a sudden it changed. Graham Potter came in, and it was we played expansive football. We started passing it around, and we were winning games that we didn't expect to. And that's when you know that's how these, I guess, the likes of Brentford as well have to be looked at as as doing a similar pattern. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see sort of what happens towards the end of this season because, Maz, on our perspective, um, should we cover should we cover Palace now? We we probably may as well, mightn't we? Because it's only on Wednesday, um, and and there's not really much time to turn around. Otherwise, it's up to you, mate. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm easy as long as Joe's happy. I don't yeah, Joe, yeah. Yeah, we, we yeah. can talk about your game as well, mate, if you like, as well, just, just for the... Just we, for the it's cool, man. The I'll, as long as you beat Palace, man, that's all I'm bothered yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Fair point, yeah, it helps yeah. you out as well, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, and I look at this game against Palace, I mean, obviously it's huge, it's a rival game, everything writes itself. Uh, it's a Wednesday night, but, the, but the, the biggest point of this for me is we actually really need to win this game. Because the Zerbi, I, I can 100% be so confident in the fact that he's gone home last night and he has not slept a wink. He, he's been looking at the highlights, he's been watching it back, and he's been saying, why didn't we do this? We should have done that, yeah. we should have done that. We need to win these games, we need to be scoring those goals. Funnily enough, he said in the press conference last week, that I think he said it to Andy Naylor, so shout out Andy, he said... That his Sassuolo team, they missed out on goal difference to the Europa League. And since then, he's almost been, that's why he wants to score so many goals. Even if you're two, three and up, he still wants to score as many more as he can. Because you never know. You just never know how it's going to end up at the end of the season. The good thing is, Maz, we're at home, we're very good. We know that. Yeah. We haven't beaten Palace in something like 1,100 days, as the uh, account on, yeah. on Twitter uh, lets yeah, us know every day. Um, yeah. <laughs> Does that change on Wednesday, mate? Um We'll see. What does it change? Yeah. Well, we always say it will change, don't we? Every game we're confident going into the Palace. Well, in the last sort of couple what of years, a one anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what a one-all. We love a draw at the moment. <laughs> but um, I think, the fact, like, like you mentioned, Ryan, the fact that we've dropped points against Fulham, Palace, who we just obviously played not too long ago, and uh, fucking hell, the third one's gone out of my head. Oh, Leeds, obviously, yesterday. Mm. So, you know, we, we've we've obviously dropped points there. And not uh, that sounds bad, like saying drop points, because obviously like saying we, we deserve yeah. three points. But like, from our perspective, yeah, like, if we are generally uh, serious about going for Europe, you know, we, have we do win. have to get results uh, against mm. teams around us. You know, mm. uh, like Fulham are vying against us. Obviously, I know Leeds aren't <laughs> alongside us, but they're... they're what they're do you big, mean, mate? They're club. direct rivals. <laughs> no, they're a, big, they're a big club, you know, obviously a big club, <laughs> obviously struggling at the moment, but regardless, they're a big club and they always like to play us. But yeah, it's just those kind of games where, you know, historically, we struggle against... The, the, the lower teams, and I put that in inverted commas, I put that in inverted commas, lower teams, and we actually play quite well against the bigger teams, your Liverpools, your Man City. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, just look at the last two seasons and we've been getting results at pretty much the top six quite quite consistently now. So, mm. yeah, I just want us to turn that around, that narrative around to actually, we're beating the, the lower teams, again, in inverted commas, and we're, we're, you know, maybe not struggling against the bigger teams, but at least being competitive and you know, if we lose, we lose. It's, it's fine. They're expected to win. So, yeah, against Palace, I just want us to be clinical. I, I don't want us to give us stupid chances away. I don't want us to make stupid mistakes like with Bobby Sanchez dropping the ball. Like, I just want us to finally <laughs> well, <that> be <laughs> consistent. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It can't happen. He's not in goal, thankfully. Um, but yeah, just, I just want us to be, I don't know, the, the, the Brighton we, we know we can be, you know? <laughs> like, the, the best mm. version of ourselves and not just, I feel like we always sort of 
um, just stutter against Palace. It seems to be some kind of like yeah. mental block against them. I don't know what it is. I don't know, mate, because when I mean, obviously, I was at Sellers, um, and and I look at it, and on another day, if that game was played five times, we win that four times out of five. There's you couldn't, they couldn't sustain that for so long but you're right at what you say it is weird because they have one two three shots against us max and seem to score at least one of them and and that's what always seems to get us down because we would have 70 percent possession we'd have 35 shots and we wouldn't be able to create you know any sort of yeah. moment of magic and i don't know why it is um joe respect yeah. respectively i mean wolves are playing a bit later on against newcastle but you have wolves uh not till the saturday luckily for you so you've got a bit mm. of time to recover from that but i mean i would say mate, i mean wolves are playing well but another game that's, that's that's huge for you guys yeah we've got to win it mate we've got to win it this is the thing we've just got to start winning football matches man and then we come back from international break we've got arsenal so you write that one off, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we've, we've got to... I remember, got to what, I remember how you feel, mate. That's the funny thing. There's Brighton fans that are here that know exactly how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> They're flying, though, aren't they? They've just been full on 3-0. So, yeah, like, that's actually yeah, good for us. That's what it is. Yeah. I, do you know what? I was just looking at your record there against Palace, like, and it's just 1-1, 1-1, 1-1. Yeah, it's 1-1 um, every time. Yeah, it's not going to be 0-0, hey. though, is it? I know they can't score, but Brighton will, so maybe you'll win this time. <laughs> Joe, I do you know uh, uh, Ryan? I hope I, you do, man. I don't know if you I don't know if you met him yet, but D, there's a Palace fan. Yeah, of course. D. Yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he is like I obviously Palace has always been a rivalry, right? And I, I've never really had like I never had like deep you know a uh, deep passion of yeah. hate towards him at all. Like not at really. All. But yeah, no, cause I, for me personally, yeah, football's never that deep. Like football, I love football. I love it to bits. Yeah, that's, one of, that's, different, one of my biggest, that's different. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm real. I'm real. Like, I'm as real as it comes. Like, I'm not, I'm not one of those people to fight people over football. I'm not there to, I'm not going to cry over a football match. But like, no, Jamie, you know I like, I'm, I'm not, I, I love football and I, I literally live and breathe it. But yeah, it's just not, I'm not that like fucking, but anyway. I am now because of D. Uh, he he has turned me into just. I just want to crush Crystal Palace. Just I want to make them absolutely nothing. Just to see his face. Here we because are. The way he, Palace, lovely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, no, guys. but the, just the way he talks about how like good they are and like how much better they are than us and how much bigger they are. And I'm like, mate, you guys can't even get a shot on target, mate. Just focus on yourselves. Do you know what I mean? Like, Do you know what, man? So, Do you know what I'd yeah. say about D? I d not that I've spoken to him in a good while, but I'd say whatever he said to you has worked a charm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if <laughs> I was D, I would be he's very happy with myself right now. He's fully rent free. Uh, funny enough, I'm actually I'm going on his show after this. So I am like I'm all, I'm already I'm already bubbling away. Like it's already You've been thinking there, about this since really... last night to be like, because, for God's no, sake, I've got to talk to yeah, D tomorrow. No, but do, do you want know it is, Ryan? Do you want know it is? He's like, he's so deluded, yeah. He's so deluded that it's actually mental. Like, I don't know if he's a character or if he's like a troll. I, I, I don't. I can't believe he's real. I just can't because the way he chats about how good Palace oh are, I'm God. like, mate, do you even watch football? I, I, I don't get it. But um, yeah, anyway, let's hope we beat them. We hope we fucking smash Palace. Um, yeah. Fair play. I didn't yeah, expect I the meltdown to actually well. come from Maz this time. I actually thought it was yeah, going to come yeah. from you, Joe. So that's a respect. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, that pretty much runs all the fun. I'll, I'll say a bit about Palace, actually, just because it is a big game. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see De Zerbi on Tuesday. It'll be interesting just to see his mood, because obviously I've spoke so much about how the mood's been so great around the training ground, how everyone's been so buzzy. It's going to be interesting to see if it's still the same, if, if De Zerbi's... One thing we can say, Maz, about De Zerbi is when you annoy him, when he plays a team that annoys him, almost every time we bounce back and wipe the floor with the next one. I mean, Charlton's yeah. a prime example. Came back. He goes, he goes on a rant like me. He goes like yeah. a rage like me. Really. We, lost, we lost to Charlton, come back Middlesbrough 5-1. We lost to Fulham 1-0, come back. We play West Ham 4-0. So I think one thing you can say is don't wind up the Zerbi in polite terms. But the one thing that I probably will say as well is it's Palace and uh, it doesn't quite work like that. So, you know, we are due a win against them. Let's be honest. Palace fans will agree. I think everyone but D, according to Mans. But I think that everyone <laughs> that is a reasonable Palace fan would agree with that. We are due a win and we have to win it all on the perspective of, of our season. You know, that if we win these games in hand, yeah, the point remains, huge. we go into the Champions League. That's mad, right? So it's not what be all and end all. And I don't agree with a lot of the meltdowns that are occurring on Twitter yesterday because there were some mad ones on there. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Uh, uh, it starts off a very, very big week for us because obviously Grimsby as well, which we'll get onto uh, after Palace. But 
Yes, thank you, boys, for joining me today. It's been a very good, very good podcast. Joe, thank you very much for coming yeah, on as well, mate. Show, mate. Um, I know it was a bit late notice. Boys, so before you go, let me yeah. let me ask: European football or an FA Cup final win? Oh my right. gosh, FA Cup final win, bang, bosh, done. Yeah. Because then we get European football anyway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, damn. That's a rubbish question. It's actually a rubbish question. <laughs> yeah. Now he thought about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What Ryan said, what Ryan said. <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't, what do you take, silverware or European football? I'll let Maz so go because I, I interrupted yeah. him. Yeah. No, that's cool, that's cool. Um, yeah, that, that's a better question, I think. Because now it actually means that as if... So mm. so if we were to win the FA Cup, we wouldn't get and Europe. You can't get Europe. You yeah, can't yeah, get Europe. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a great question. Do you know what? Oh, that is really tough. Fuck. Um, I'm going to go with silverware, I think. Just to say you've won something, you know? Because yeah, Europe, right. it's great for away days. It's yeah, great yeah, to yeah. like experience, like, yeah, going away Mate, to... It's the right answer. Don't Napa, worry about it. You know, it's West, the right West Ham, answer. West Ham away to High Napa, like, it doesn't get any better than that. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think yeah, winning silverware just to, just yeah, to flex on like Spurs and stuff. Do you know what I mean, it's like, well, we've actually won something, mate. So yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah. mate, I think as well, just this, the day out would be insane. Like just yeah. to be able to go and go to Wembley, say you played a Man City or a Man United and beat them in the final. It would be absolute yeah, poetry. Exactly. I think it would be one of those that would always be remembered around the football club. Be remembered in football as well. People would remember when Brighton beat Man City in the FA Cup final. Whereas people aren't going to remember when Brighton got to Europa, Europa League for the yeah, first yeah. time. Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it's league. huge. Yeah, I think the FA Cup still has its magic, mate. So I, I agree with yeah, Maz. I think, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be the win against anyone. Great question, think, Joe. Great but question. to add on that, I'd love, I'd love, um, just for the sake of football, the football gods, if anything's up there, it would be Man United in the final because it has been 40 years this year since 1983 with the last time we got to an FA Cup final and lost to Manchester United, which is one of the biggest moments in our history so far. Mm. For us to then come back 40 years later to play United and potentially even have more of a chance of beating them nowadays, you never know. That would be great. That would be like a football, that would be a football write-up completely. Casemiro um, yeah. red card. Beating Man United as well, yeah. to be fair. Casemiro <laughs> red card. We win 5-1, boys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, but yeah, thank you boys for joining me. Uh, do comments below, actually, just before we sign off. Um, oh yeah, Joe, Joe, do you want to... Oh yeah, so but Joe, every... you won't actually know that. Yeah, Yeah. So every, every week we, uh, we do comments down below. So we ask our audience just to put anything in the comments. We give you the power. If they've made this it week. this Obviously, far. Don't, don't make it anti Brighton, please. But if right, you, okay. you can make it. You can make it as funny and as you know, as whatever creative as you want want it to be. No, I tell you what. Right, if Leeds United were to go down, which one Leeds player are you taking from oh, us? Oh, good one. Love I it. rate that. Love it. Love that. Yeah, love oh. that. If it's oh, not gosh. non-to, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you <laughs> go. Yeah, comment down below which Leeds player you would take. Love yeah. that, Joe. Luke Ayling. Anyway, boys, thank you very much for joining. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> cheers, Joe, mate. You've been an absolute pleasure as always. Yeah. Where can we always. find you? Cheers, Plug yourself. What's your, what's your socials, everything you're doing at the minute? Yeah, so it's uh, just your football show, uh, heavily Leeds related, of course, but uh, during the running, um, we'll be getting a lot of the bottom sides uh, involved, but you won't need to worry about that. But yeah, <laughs> just general football chat. There's your Brighton post match on there. Um, check that out. I've had a few Brighton fans in the comments, to be fair, so fair oh, play. Cool. So um, nice. yeah, just check me out over there. Thank you. Nice yeah, one, mate. Nice. Well done. Nice one. Love it. Um, cool. Thank you, Maz, as well, for joining. Um, great podcast, as always. So, um, yeah, make sure you have liked, subscribed if you're on YouTube, and obviously stream if you are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that good stuff. Leave us a review on Spotify as well. And we'll see you probably just after oh. Crystal Palace. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe I'm just saying that. Yeah, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Cheers. Bye-bye. Peace.